Hi, I'm Jeff Blauett, Cooperative Elevator Technical Agronomist, uh, out in the cornfield today. Um, kind of thought we'd talk about what we're doing, uh, where these corn plants are, and what we should be thinking about at this stage of the game um, from a management perspective. Um, as you can see, um, it's kind of warm out today. A lot of times in the movies, they'll put on baby oil to make everybody look nice and shiny. This is the natural deal for me today. Uh, we're out here in mid-July. Um, as you can see, we've got corn here that's kind of rolled up here late in the afternoon. Um, that corn plant's kind of rolling up to try and preserve as much moisture as it can so it doesn't transpire. Uh, basically, uh, like we sweat to keep cool, corn plants try to do the same thing, but it needs to preserve water. because There's a pretty important time of the corn's life cycle coming up. Um, this field was planted a little later. This is one of our test plots, planted May 16. Um, there's a lot of fields that were planted earlier than that that are a little closer to tasseling, so I thought we'd talk about what, uh, what that means for us today. Um, we have to look at the commodity markets and the value of it, but one of the management decisions we need to make now is talking about fungicides. Um, with this hot and dry weather pattern, uh, we don't really have a lot of disease pressure yet. And if we stay hot and dry, maybe disease isn't really where we're um, concerned about what we're doing here. But there is another phase of uh, the strobular and fungicides that may need to be considered, especially in this environment. Um, basically the plant health effect, they, they've kind of coined that phrase over time since they've uh, become popular. but. What that's basically uh, doing in the plant for gaining some plant health, uh, there's a plant hormone that's uh, biochemical, if you will, that basically is produced when that plant is under stress called ethylene. Uh, it's kind of like you and I, when we get a, a little bit of an illness, our body tries to produce biochemicals or immune system re reaction that uh, fights off that illness as best we can. The plants are trying to do the same thing. Uh, they're trying to fight off that stress by producing ethylene. Um, that's its reaction. The strobilar and fungicides suppress the production of ethylene. Producing ethylene slows that plant down and doesn't help its ability to keep growing and producing dry matter. So we want to try and alter that plant's biochemistry so we can actually get it to keep producing, keep going, and be more productive. Um, so that's why we would talk about it in a dry year. Um, it's not for every field. We know that, especially in these commodity market prices uh, where they are. But it is still something that needs to be considered, especially in a corn-on-corn -corn environment. Um, we have a lot of expertise with the brands that we work with. Uh, Winfield and Cropland with the answer plot system has a, a massive testing effort going on all over the country evaluating different genetics uh, and their response to fungicides. Some hybrids have a much larger response than others, and that's pretty valuable information when we get into environments like this where we probably want to make sure we're not leaving yield on the table where we have the biggest response, and we can position a field or two where it needs to be and avoid others where it probably isn't going to pay back. So I guess with that being said, I thought we'd look at a few things for when is the best time for a fungicide application. Um, we'd like to have all the silks out, and we'd really like to have all of the, the tassels emerge throughout the field. Um, you've maybe heard in the past about arrested ear syndrome um, with a fungicide applied too early prior to silk emergence. Uh, certain adjuvants actually probably cause that, and we really want to make sure that we don't do that to the corn plant. So I thought we'd look at staging and trying to predict how far away that corn is from tasseling. So, if we look at this plant, for instance, this was planted in uh, mid-April. Uh, obviously, we can see this, the tassels are basically merged, and we've already got an ear and silks. If we look at this tassel a little bit closer, you can see that there is uh, pollen sac. So this is actually just starting to shed pollen within the last day. So this plant with silks out and tassels out. This plant, if that field had uh, all of this out there, would be time to apply. Um, if we look at 
Um, this plant here, this was planted the 17th of April. Um, this is 5806, so it's a 108 day uh, hybrid. So to time that, to figure out how far out we are from tasseling, we want to figure out how many leaves are wrapped around that tassel yet. So if we look at a leaf that has a collar, is fully formed. So you want to pull those away. This leaf is the last one that has a collar. So this is the leaf mass that does not have a collar yet. So let's see once we have one, essentially two leaves around that tassel that have not collared yet. So what that means is uh, a leaf forms at this stage of the game after about 55 unit or 55 growing degree units, 55 to 60. Um, so, with the heat units that we're accumulating, with the weather we've got now with this heat, that's about uh, two days worth of growing degree units per leaf. So this one had two leaves wrapped around that tassel yet. So that's telling us that in four days, roughly, that this corn will have a tassel out. Um, we just looked at the other plant that had silks out and the tassel just emerged. Uh, that's where a lot of our genetic improvement has been on getting this corn more drought tolerant. Um, it's basically trying to throw those silks the same time as a tasseled. Historically, the tassel would be out starting to throw pollen a little bit before that silk emerged. And in a dry period with silks being 98% water or something of that matter, um, when drought hit, those silks were late to show up and half the pollen was dropping before the silks were there. With the genetic improvement the last number of years that these companies have been doing, we've kind of gotten that to sink a lot better. Matter of fact, I've even seen where silks are out even a tick before the tassel, which you know doesn't hurt anything. But um, So that's pretty important to know the timing of, of that when it comes to a fungicide application. So if you look at this plant, uh, this plant came out of this plot, planted a month later than the other one, same hybrid, 5806. So let's see how far we are apart. Remember, a month later. So if we pull these collared leaves off and see what we have here. Okay, this leaf has a collar. And this one does not. So we have one, two, three, four, five. six, and basically this is number seven wrapping the tassel. So if we have seven leaves uh, that had that tassel wrapped, and we figure somewhere around two uh, days per collar, that's telling us it's about two weeks from tasseling. So basically we have, uh, you know, two weeks difference of tasseling from a month's different in planting date, which that's not uncommon. I mean, we get a month difference. Uh, we're not really looking at a month different in tassel time. That, that is a smaller period, but, so if we're looking at that being on the later end of where a lot of guys were planting corn this year, two weeks from now gets us just about to the end of July. So the, the pollination window looks like it's gonna be the last two weeks of July this year, um, starting, you know, probably somewhere around towards the 15th. So that's gonna be our fungicide timing window. Here's what it looks like when we dissect those plants and looking at the ears, we looked at the tassels, but here's how fast they develop. I thought we would just show you what those ears look like, just so uh, give it a frame of reference and how fast they develop. Um, so I just wanted to touch on that. So that will be this week's Field Friday segment, and we'll see you next week.